we have all the tools in our pocket to proceed to the algorithm itself. So, we have some function, f, which maps n bit strings to n bit strings. We can have m here not equal to n. But really it doesn't matter, uh, matter so we uh, take n here. And this function has a period, some r, such as for any x, f of x plus r equals to f of x. And we need to search for this period. And in the factoring case, this function f would be fa, which we introduced in the previous steps. And again, uh, here, by n big, we will denote 2 in the power n. So this is uh, the scheme of our circuit, and it is pretty much the same as uh, in Simon's algorithm. Instead of this part here, where we had Adamar transform, and now we have uh, QFT, quantum Fourier transform, which is reasonable, because instead of searching for period in Z modulo 2, we search for period in Z modulo, no, Z modulo n big. So let's apply this scheme. Well, up to this point here, we have the same results as for uh, the Simon's algorithm. So first we apply Adamar to the input register to this. Uh, then we apply the oracle. Uh, and, uh, in our case, it is not an oracle anymore. It is just an exponentiation uh, function. Uh, quantum operator um, implemented for the exponentiation function. And after all this, we have all the function values among this, uh, the arguments stored in the system state. And now we are ready to perform measurement of the value register, this, for the sake of clarity. Okay, as in Simon's case, we have, after uh, the value register measurement, we have only one function value in the value register, and all the arguments which map to this value. So it's full reverse image of this f of x0. And in Simon's case, we had only two values here in the input register, but here we have more. We have some a values, and this a is the number of times which function period r fits into this big n. And it is approximately this number of times. And if we uh, want to define it more precisely, then we will write like this. So uh, this is how many values will be uh, stored in the system uh, state here. And it is time uh, to apply the main, uh, the main part of the algorithm, a quantum Fourier transform. So we, will, uh, we have all these uh, values in the input register, and we have to apply QFT, so let's do this. We have 1 divided by square root of a, and n also goes here under square root, and from that QFT formula, now the sum over all 
j's and the sum over all y's of exponent here to pi uh, x0 y divided by n and another exponent to pi j r y divided by n and y. And as you see, this exponent here does not depend on j. So I'm going to replace, change places of these sums and get it uh, from uh, the inner sum. So what will we get after this? Uh, we will have this expression. So this is what we have in our input register after applying quantum Fourier transform. And the y's here are all the basis vectors of the argument uh, state space. And uh, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to measure the probability, I'm going to compute the probability of measuring uh, one particular y, any of particular y's. So let's do it. If we measure some particular y, this sum here goes away, and we have to square everything, everything, and we get this. Now, um, this we are going to take the modular and uh, the absolute value, and it is one, so we don't even write it. And we have this sum over j's. under the uh, model, uh, the absolute value of the sum, e to p i j r y divided by n and squared. So this is our probability of measuring any of these particular, uh, any of these y's, any of the vectors, basis vectors of our uh, subspace for the argument. 